So here we're back with uh, Axis Empires, and it's been a while. I've basically gave notice at my work, and I'm moving to another position. Stressful time for me, and uh, between that and sort of teaching my wife magic and some other stuff, uh, it's been kind of hard for me to get any time to play. But I'm trickling my way back in. Uh, you know, it's only been a few days, but it's hard to remember exactly what was going on, etc. I think I made a screw up, so I tried to reverse that. Uh, Japanese played an army plot. They want to get the army in place so that they can start playing some of their directives. That uh, and that's where I screwed up. I played the directive straight up, and I don't think that was legal. Now, normally you would actually penalize your opponent by saying, "Oh, your card play doesn't count." Well, when I can correct things without it having an effect. That's too terrible. I try to do some. What did they do over here? Well, they slammed into the Russians, took, what is this, Omsk here, hit Sebastopol, or, uh, sorry, oh, not Sebastopol, uh, Vladivostok, yeah, uh, marching down here, marching up here, and they're getting more and more territories. They're up one more. I don't know where they are, but they're getting awfully close to this 12 to 14. I probably ought to have counted, because this was a... Uh, point turn. It doesn't make a difference. They can't go above that. But at some point I'm going to be able to say, hey, had they not taken this, had they taken the Hakuichu or not played at all, they would have won the game. Mm -hmm. And the Hakuichu gets them the reinforcements without the benefits of holding on. I just didn't think it was possible that they could actually win. And if they were only going to get up to the plus four spot, well, then it's not really useful. It's better to have stopped at the plus three spot with uh, the mandate. Over here in Europe, the Germans opened up also with a production directive on the Type 21 U-boats. Now, they just, uh, neither side got their directive. Uh, in the case of the Germans, they picked up uh, the directive table. And, oh, I, don't know, I think that destroyed a French, uh, a Vichy French unit. See, the Germans have pulled back, kind of forming... Uh, very limited west wall here. They can't do a lot to defend France here. And, I mean, they're already kicked out of Paris. Why try to defend territory that doesn't really count for them? So they're going to take the most defensive position and allow the Allies to come forward and set themselves up. Uh, very, very cheap Normandy landings, as it were. But they've also... Advan oh, I didn't roll the dice for this one. Ho-ho. Uh, two, four... Five, six. I also didn't move my reserve movement. I forgot that. The second movement. So I'm got an attack here that probably is going to do something. Might as well count it. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. To three is five to one. I've got like three shifts in favor, one against, which is going to put me over on the top chart. But we get a bad roll. Defender retreat two and one each way. So the one each way, normally you would have to take uh, with a blitz an armor step, but I don't have to worry about that because I don't have a blitz marker there. But the defender does have to get out of there. I could stand back and take another loss, but then I'd still lose the city. So I'll get out of there and we'll see some sort of advance. Might as well move these forward. I see these kind of have the harder time traveling. So I'll move these forward. Two, four. Let's move these in. These are going to form the Panzer Army Africa, actually. Uh, we'll call that the Panzer Army Caucasus. Um, and they're there. Much uh, even more exciting, interesting, whatever. So we've kind of pocketed a few remaining Russians here, crushed them out. Losses were not terribly in Germany's advantage there, but they pretty much, these are Yugoslavs here, so they've pretty much destroyed the entire Russian south. Of course, there's nothing here in the south of Russia, but it does leverage their whole line. They're going to have to pull back. It's going to look kind of like an RCW type, not RCW, but uh, Russia type scenario where Russia's kind of uh, garrisoning Moscow primarily. Up here, the Germans also made a little bit of an advance. You see they pushed the Russians back a little. Uh, nothing big there. There was just one unit and they uh, rationalized their line a little bit. I've got a 
see if there's anything that can move. These guys can keep moving, so they'll probably shift around and position themselves a little better. Might be some stuff over on the Japanese side that hasn't moved a second time as well. And then we'll go on to the Allies. Okay, so this is a little odd. Um, just touching on this one card Operation Husky here that I played for the Allies. And maybe this has been caught and exists somewhere and I just don't have the energy to look it up. But it brings the SWPA Logistics Marker into play. That's already in play from card 40, which the number actually commits to. It's card 41. And I don't see any marker for 41. I see one for 44 that's a different logistics. Uh, I don't know if what this means is if you play this, and this is how I'm going to have to do it, it goes into the delay box anyhow. Or if it's already present. Um, generally, the things that say this bring it into the delay box. Ah... Uh, I can't see penalizing the U.S. player for holding this operation. It seems like it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to leave it where it is and assume that either one brings it into play, but the other one doesn't put it back in the double-A box. I, I don't know what the ruling is there. Um, but other than that, uh, I ran into also, I'm running the Trident Conference here in the West, and this brought up another issue, which... Uh, Thomas brought up to me, which is when he mentioned Avalanche, which is actually the next one I'm playing. Or no, it's not. I've got Avalanche uh, in the deck. But I played Avalanche over here on the Pacific map. I can't find in the rules anything that, that says what his statement was. And maybe this is an errata issue that I didn't see. But uh, his claim and one would think he should know, uh, is that if I play one card like that, I can't play the like-named card in the other theater. But I did look this up, and I think I may have even mentioned it before, but it's been such a long time since I've mentioned, since I've played. Under theater selection restrictions, the only thing I've found to do with this is, a faction cannot select a TK card for its DS pending card. Yeah, okay. And when selecting one, they cannot select identically named option call during the same season. Okay. So, I don't know if that's just, you know, that should be struck out or hey, whatever. You know, I'm playing it by the rules as written to whatever extent I can, but if somebody can give me you know, a chime in, hey, you're playing it wrong. That was an errata, we decided. Because it does seem kind of weird that these conferences, yeah, I'll tell you what seems really weird, that I can play two different conferences on different maps, but uh, I, I, I don't know which one makes more sense, which doesn't. It certainly doesn't make sense when things like uh, uh, the Arcadia conference is just a bonus over the Boardman uh, one, and then if I could play the bonus one on both maps uh, for free, why do I have two of them? And that's, that's what kind of leads me to the question here of is there just a typo in the rules or whatever, but I, I, I don't remember a response to my question written, so I figure I'll repeat it verbally because, <laughs> hey, what the heck. Um, okay, so I'll go on playing the allies here. Ah crap, well here it is. Okay, so here under the option card procedure, and I don't know what to do about this, but uh, if the phasing player legally plays an option card with the C symbol, it must remove the identically named card found in the other deck. So, <laughs> uh, in that case, damn, um, how many of these have I faced? I don't really know. I have been completely ignoring that particular slice of the rules, and you know, obviously I'm not going to penalize the allies who probably would not have made the choice that they did, uh, and the choice didn't do them any good. I'll try to follow this in the future, but I don't know what it means at this point. Um, so I mean, what happened here in the West this turn? Uh, 
I wanted to play Symbol Conference, but I can't. I think I played Trident in the in 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 Pacific. But here's the thing: I couldn't play Symbol because the Western Pacific status is no more. Oh, I was allowed to. That's a star that only affects on the one map, so I could slip the Symbol Conference in. And let me make sure everything's right because I want it to do both. Uh, place and delay box. I'm going to get more troops here. This is where I get my colonials. I didn't take them in... Uh... And this all makes more sense now. I kind of have a grasp on it. Um, one thing I did do though with the uh, Pacific commitment, I sent the British home fleet over into the Pacific because, hey, I've got my beachhead in France. It doesn't look like I really need a lot of naval power um, at this point anymore. So, uh, you know, I'm going to just start shipping troops over as much as I can. As to the, uh, as to uh, these cards, I'm going to try to play them by the rules at this point, but obviously I've screwed up pretty majorly with that. But, you know, I've screwed up with a lot of things. Uh, Japan's doing pretty well here. Let's not regret too much what the Allies can do after this. Well, as to the actual Allied actions, um, using a carrier strike, Port Moresby fell. And that blitz marker actually isn't there now. And the Allies wanted to launch an attack here on uh, Batavia, but they just don't have the forces, and they're going to have to shift them over. They're shifting stuff around, some armor up here. It's trying, uh, they, they did a couple of attacks, and you can see a couple surface fleets here, to try to take uh, Ulithi, which would put them in a better position for Palau, and just trying to push that perimeter in deeper and deeper. It looks like they're getting a good uh, movement here, where maybe they'll take Singapore and fight their way back into uh, Indochina, India, etc. Maybe they'll have as easy a time, because I won't remember... Uh, the weather rules for them any better than I have for the Japanese. Uh, over here in the west, they're really kicking the butt. Um, slammed up against that west wall and just drove the Germans here out of Antwerp. Uh, not really needing to do much and it doesn't look like the Germans are going to be able to hold in the west at all. It doesn't matter how much how well they're doing here in the east if they can't hold off and, and, and start losing uh, you know, uh, German heartland country, it could be very, very bad for them. Now, I'm going to have to look at the supply rules and see just how bad, but this isn't a game where, hey, if Berlin falls, the game's over. Uh, it doesn't look like the victory conditions work that way. What really happens here is the Allies have, until this day, to do well enough. Now, well enough could mean just wiping this map out completely uh, and then being able to shift some of their uh, support resources over here. We already see how cards are, uh, the way the uh, like named cards work, that's how troops are associated between two theaters. So colonial troops that could have gone over here to the, uh, to the uh, Eastern theater and I didn't actually use them over there, so I'm not double dipping. Uh, I used over here in the west where I need troops more. And I'm shifting my supply units over, which are a little bit more free. On to the Soviets. We'll just keep rolling. Russian card choices, August Storm Offensive. This actually cost them one of their three activities. They had to go with a low cost card here, Stalin Order's Attack. Gave them some reserves. Oddly, it looks like the same unit, this 1-2 one, one, Airborne or 2-1-2 uh, or 1-1-3 one, one, Airborne here, the VDV, showing up on both fronts. I feel like that doesn't seem right. It, that card shouldn't be in both fronts, but it's only an Airborne. Um, maybe it indicates greater training if needed to fight on both fronts. I, I, I really don't know. Anyway...
Um, jumping away from that, some heavy uh, replacements, in particular 12 infantry steps over here and some armor. Uh, and likewise, four more over here. Brings a lot of the reserves into play, especially the headquarters and Russian headquarters are becoming a real effect here. So you can see how many they've got. They've pushed the Germans back. This is Leningrad back here, Moscow here. They're swinging forward in the north. Yeah, they're losing ground in the south like mad, but uh, the German line's not able to hold up defensively. And that's something that this game seems to show and highlight very well. If you can't be on the attack, it's going to be painful. Um, it's hard to defend in this game, I think. Uh, it just really seems like... I, I guess you can make really strong points, but you can't make a whole defensive line. It seems to reflect mobile warfare in the East better uh, than most World War II games do. Most of them, it feels like you can create this nice defense in depth. And yeah, the Russians get overrun by just the sheer force that the Germans throw at them in the Barbarossa situation. But... Uh, certainly in Whiff and Third Reich, I feel like uh, things just bog down into this non-mobile war or non-mobile feeling war. This one captures that feeling of mobility uh, the same way kind of Hitler's war does where there's a lot of action going on where you've got this advantage when you can attack. Um, this may be not as extreme as Hitler's war. You see the Russians pulled back to Baku here and are heading back to Rostov, uh, put that under threat and force the Germans to not just advance in the south. There's not a lot of value there. We've seen that already. Um, the difference, though, is the Chinese theater. Now, obviously, the weather and my ignoring it has totally uh, mutated what the world should be like here, probably. Uh, but even trying to pay attention to it, it feels a little bit too mobile. Just maybe an uninformed view there on my side, but uh, that's my initial impression is that it's a little more mobile than I'd like, even though I think I really like how uh, uh, this is working out in the East Front. All right, that's the end of this turn. I got a lot of counters to put in. I'm going to continue the winter on this tape just to get it all on one tape. I don't want to do two tapes for the winter. Uh, actually, this is the autumn, right? <laughs> Not even the winter yet. Uh, but. Over here, we start to see the mud happening. So things are going to slow down in Europe. And uh, who knows over in Asia, the weather, I just don't have a grip on it yet. Uh, I can follow it, but it's hard to plan for it for me. Okay, onward. Well, for the Axis, the uh, Japanese managed to get themselves a command failure. Cost them a support unit. Uh, they're continuing with their attacks, though. And you know, pretty much taking the Russians out of everywhere. I don't know if they're going to beat the time limit where they would have been able to win. The Germans, though, things just look hopeless. Um, they've been able to build a line, at the very least, connect things up, make it more difficult for the Russians to break through. In the south, they've won, right? <laughs> but uh, that's not going to finish things, and they're so overmatched up here. Uh, they started splitting units off. Actually sent somebody up here, hoping to take Sebastopol uh, before the tide turns, and they can maybe get this marker up to the two spot or something. Because right now, well, last look they were at the plus three spot. They can take a couple more here, but where are they going to get the third one? I just don't see it. Uh, so I, I, I don't think they're going to be able to push it up to... This plus six, uh, that's three victory spaces. I, I just don't know. But if this collapses and they can swing up here, yeah, they do get it. Uh, I, I, I have no idea. Um, one thing they managed, though, was they got their first little sub-fleet. They got a couple of them up there in the strategic warfare box already, trying to slow down the advance from the Western Allies. But, you know... Germany looks like it's just doomed very, very quickly. They tried to build a line here. 
again, but that's going to easily be broken. There's just they're facing so much more than they've got on both fronts. Uh, you know, the counter mix kind of guarantees that you're not going to get uh, the Germans being able to outproduce the Russians and Allies between them, which is cool. <laughs> it wouldn't let them do. All right, on to the Allies. For the Allies, not a lot they can do. Um, they're shifting some forces, trying to move them up into position where they can do something in the Netherlands, East Indies. They looked at their fleet uh, assets, etc., and just could not come up with an invasion plan uh, that compared well. And then the Russians, eh, they kind of played around and scared some of the Japanese away. Over here in the west, we see... The Allies punching through the Western Wall again. I probably cheated on the weather there. I noticed some rolls on the mud that I have not, that I've been totally ignoring. Uh, I'm just really good at ignoring rolls. Um, in particular, hey, sometimes I remember it, sometimes I don't, which is uh, the ground unit in the mud hex cannot move out, and out of a hex containing an enemy zone of control with no exceptions. Uh, that means you can't slip along the flank, uh, along the front. Um, I guess you can't advance after combat, which clearly happened here where there was an enemy zone of control. I, you know, I don't know what to do. I've been cheating so much across the board that I, clearly I've been fighting far too mobile a war during the weather turns. Um, and then over here, the Russians, well, by then I knew the rules, and they were a little bit more uh, within them. Um, kept fighting an attrition battle still here. And, you know, uh, positioning themselves to just keep wearing out the Germans. All right, I'm going to load this one up. This is the end of the winter. Uh, I'm sorry, the end of the autumn. Going into the winter and going into 1945, really. Okay, by my count, and I may be wrong here, the Japanese would be one point away from the auto victory. I get them at 14 points total, counting what they have uh on the board, but minus three for these territories here that they've lost. Uh, Rabul's already back in U.S. hands, but other than that, they've just been expanding and expanding and expanding. And the attack on Russia, it looks like they would have gotten the automatic victory. Uh, anyway, that's not really here or there. It's just clearly a mistake on my part. Uh, I'll actually load this up now.